My book takes on a widely held incorrect view that the global financial crisis has had little to no significant effect on the global financial governance architecture, particularly around those features that pertain to emerging markets and developing countries. And what my book does is develops an alternative understanding of the consequences of the global financial crisis. What I argue is that, in fact, it has had the effect of bringing about evolutionary, gradual, uneven evolution in the global financial architecture, such that the evolving architecture of the present time looks very different than the centripetal character of the governance architecture that was created as an outcome of the Bretton Woods Conference of 1944. Albert Hirschman's work has played a really central role in my work as an academic, and in particular, it forms the analytical framework for the book that I'm talking about today. Um, in fact, what I argue in the book is that one can't make sense of the changes in the global financial governance architecture without taking really at their center Albert Hirschman's epistemic and theoretical commitments. Um, in particular, Albert Hirschman really focused our attention away from the kind of epical ruptures that so captivate academic accounts but are really rare in historical terms, and he directed our attention to the role of small-scale, prosaic changes, and really encouraged us to look at institutional, ideational, and social change in very different sorts of ways. And so using a Hirschmanian lens, I focus on evolution, on unevenness, on experimentation, on learning, learning by doing, learning from others. Um, and these are some of the insights that really inform the way in which I try to make sense out of what's happening in the global financial landscape.